Hello everyone, welcome back to Prep Talk Podcast. I'm your host Vartika Bhandari. After receiving an overwhelming response on our AP Physics podcast, we understood a need to make a separate in-depth podcast on each AP Physics subject. This episode focuses on AP Physics C mechanics and for this episode we have none other than our AP Physics expert Ashish Kumar. Hello sir, how have you been doing and welcome back to the podcast. Vartika, thank you so much for having me here and uh, you know I, I saw that kids took our last podcast on physics all kinds really well yeah. and so yeah it, it's an amazing idea to brief them on how physics and mechanics the entire course and exam preparation in general looks like absolutely so in the last ap physics episode as ashish has said we understood that ap physics c is calculus based now in this episode we are going to dive a little deeper into the subject and understand the crux of the subject and strategies to prepare for the exam we would like you to explain ap physics c mechanics a little better and how it is different from the rest of the available ap physics subjects we will dive a bit you know or we will rather move backward and from continuing from our last podcast first i'll brief you on ap physics 1 right. so physics 1 is algebra based and it is basically all the topics which you do in 11th grade starting from kinematics ending to shm and gravity hmm. then comes physics 2 which is again algebra based and it contains all the topics starting from fluids ending to waves and optics next one comes is physics c mechanics which is calculus based physics containing topics which are kinematics newton's laws of motion work energy and power system of particles and linear momentum rotation oscillations and gravitation these are the seven units that constitutes physics c mechanics but to give a difference on algebra based and calculus based here the derivations are very much deep rooted into calculus so you need to have a deeper understanding of differentiation integration and also the differential equation part so if you are thorough with these physics and mechanics will feel more like physics 1 which is algebra based the extension part gets included in physics c lastly we have also have physics c enm which is again a calculus based physics that contains chapter which are from 12th grade which are electrostats circuits that is dc circuit and capacitors then magnetism and induction the, these are all the four physics available and i have already briefed you on physics and mechanics here right the basic difference is algebra based and calculus based right so is it right if we say that calculus based physics is bit more tough than uh, algebra based physics definitely it is in algebra based a rearrangement of equation or simple algebraic calculation makes you reach to an answer mm -hmm. here the scope is endless and also we at times confuse and start considering a continuous system into a discrete system an algebra based calculation is usually applied in a discrete system where a unified value a form value is assigned to a problem but when a given quantity is changing with time or with distance you cannot apply discrete calculations you have to definitely get into a continuous which is the calculus part of the cal you know calculation particularly so any problem in physics and mechanics we first have to segregate the question or the topic into will this particular topic involve a discrete calculation or will it have the extension which is continuous calculation and hence assigning or putting calculus to the task okay so uh, since there are four options available for a student to choose for ap physics what are the benefits of taking ap physics c mechanics uh to give you a 
you know, a difference between the four APs and what is so different or, you know, important about doing physics and mechanics. Mm -hmm. Physics 1 is equivalent to introductory college course. Mm -hmm. Physics 2 is again equivalent to introductory college course in second semester. Physics and mechanics is equivalent to again the first semester and calculus based college course. Physics C E N M is again one semester equivalence but calculus based college course. So if you are applying or if you are seeking for a course waiver or course credit on a relatively easier physics based future courses you can go for physics 1 and 2 and if you are applying for engineering major or for that say physics major or science major definitely taking physics in mechanics and getting the course credit in the first semester makes a lot of sense moreover there is very one of the important points is when you are moving from uh, you know one place where you have completed your entire academic years to a new school, the entire environment is new to you. You make new friends and there is a lot of time that, that, that gets utilized into, you know, giving that comfort or settling down into a place. So first semester is always a lot trickier. So it makes a lot of sense to get a, you know, heads up or already to have those credits where, you know, you don't have to work a lot in the first semester. And you are relatively uh, on an easier ground. All right. So coming on to the important topics, like you have already told us what topics are covered under AP Physics C. So talking about the most easier, easiest topic under this and the difficult topic under this. So here we will be diving a lot deeper into Physics C mechanics. First, the exam structure then the unit wise structure and then looking into the toughest and the easiest topic within that unit. Okay. So in the exam structure, we have a 90 minutes long exam that has 50% of its weightage on MCQ and 50% of its weightage in free response question, which are FRQs. Hmm. We have 35 MCQ questions which need to be solved in 45 minutes of time. And as I mentioned, it is 50% of the exam in terms of scope. Then we have three free response questions and each to be marked out of 15 points. So 45 points for these FRQs to be solved within 45 minutes of time. There is no break between uh, the MCQ to FRQ transition. Mm -hmm. Point to be noted in FRQ, you have necessarily one question which will be based on an experiment, either the experiment designing or the experiment conclusion. Now, when the exam in 2020 got shifted to digital mode, they increased, as in the college board, increased the proportion to avoid cheating for this experiment-based questions. Since then, we have seen the trend of experiment-based question being a bit more difficult as compared to a normal question which are calculation-based. From here, now we will look into the topic-wise segregation of uh, the physics mechanics. On unit one, we have kinematics, which approximately holds the weightage of somewhere around 15%. And it covers topic which are motion in 1D and motion in 2D. Both of these topics gets primarily asked in MCQ part because of algebra-based calculation involved in it and not generally in the free response question part. The most important out of these two is motion in 2D. Motion in 1D gets rarely asked. If the question is there, it will involve the concept of relative velocity. Shifting to unit two, which are Newton's laws of motion. It has topics of first law, second law, club together, circular motion, and third law. Third law being the easiest, where the action-reaction pair-based question gets asked. And circular motion being the toughest, where the question of radial as well as tangential acceleration might be experienced. This topic holds somewhere 20% weightage because Newton's laws of motion 
gets included in almost all the units while calculating a question and hence this this unit with least amount of topics also have this high a weightage in the exam the next unit is work energy and power power is the easiest conservation of energy is the most frequently asked and the most important part of this chapter this unit approximately covers 15% of the ap physics exam weightage next one we have system of particles and linear momentum the topics are center of mass impulse and momentum conservation of linear momentum and collision the easiest center of mass usually gets asked in uh, mcqs the toughest conservation of linear momentum and collision has to be done very well because it might this topic might be in frq and one entire question might be based out on this particular topic so 15 marks in one go this entire unit approximately carries 15% worth of weightage of the entire exam next one the entire unit is the toughest and the most problematic area for kids approximately 20% of the weightage is unit 5 which is rotation the topics covered are torque and rotational statics rotational kinematics rotational dynamics and energy angular momentum and its conservation the angular momentum and its con conservation along with energy conservation in rotational dynamics usually constitute the experiment based question which i was talking about a while back this topic has to be done really well you have to be a lot focused about not making any mistake in this one so i would rate this as, as to be the toughest in rotation as the unit and the easiest one is rotational kinematics which are just simple velocity acceleration calculation based on the dynamics or kinematics of an object the second last unit unit 6 is oscillation simple harmonic motion spring and pendulum this is a pretty easy topic uh you know entirely the toughest part in it can be the calculation of a time period based on a practical situation a simple pendulum a spring mass system this can be the toughest out of it the easiest one can be the formula based energy calculation so this topic just carries roughly 10% worth of weightage and we can take or we can keep this topic as not so prior has to be done once you cover everything really well till rotation now the last one is gravitation gravitational forces orbits of planets and satellites are the two topics in this particular unit approximately 10 to 12% is the entire weightage the easiest is just the force calculation the toughest is the combination of circular motion along with gravity and hence the satellite based problem again this topic is relatively easier and has to be completed only once you are thorough with everything till rotation here i constitute uh, or here i conclude upon all the topics and difficulty order of sub topics within it and i hope vertika this part was satisfactory as part what you were expecting absolutely it was more than satisfactory because you answered three questions in just one so i just wanted to ask that uh, the toughest one that you the toughest unit that you talked about is also the most scoring for students yeah definitely rotation it covers 20% of the weightage and one frq is always guaranteed from rotation 15 marks just in frq out of 45 that is 33% of frq and 4 to 5 mcqs definitely can be expected out of this topic so how would you rate the difficulty level of ap physics c mechanics as compared to the rest of the ap physics so, so other teachers might hate me for this <laughs> <laughs> but i would say after calculus bc the only subject that will require you to work your ass off is physics c mechanics so i rate it second in the difficulty order of all the ap's available to us okay. and hence mechanics need to be attempted only if you are thorough with the physics content 
not only the understanding of physics but the understanding of mathematics both will be clubbed together to reach to conclusion in almost every alternate question throughout this, this exam all right so with this uh, we have our last question for you what are some tips that you would like to share with the students with uh, for ap physics c mechanics you know the most uh, common mistake which i have seen students making is when we they are deriving an equation or reaching to a conclusion based on data they just focus on reaching to the answer that is they already know what is the independent and dependent variable involved while they are teaching themselves these topic or they are studying or preparing for physics and mechanics but the catch here is don't make this mistake rather while deriving any problem focus on all the quantities involved not just the independent and dependent variables so the question might be twisted where the independent and dependent variable might be flipped or changed so be open towards accepting that even though you have not seen a similar kind independent and dependent variable but it might be changed based on problem to problem so while you are deriving phase you know while you are deriving an equation please focus on all the quantities involved not just what you have been taught in your school uh with this uh, i think i have briefed everything that that i could share we will keep on posting more of contents and as and when vartika demands me to you know say something or give students some knowledge on it i'll be up i'll be there we are glad you are here and i hope this podcast is helping a lot of students uh, to get a clear knowledge about what subject they should go ahead with so with this we conclude the podcast uh, we have a lot more podcast lined up for you guys so don't forget to follow our channel for more and stay tuned and we shall see you in the next one goodbye